What's up guys, it's Cam coming at you from the 2.6. Welcome back to CFR. 2019 was a year of a few fragrance brands being released by YouTubers, but there was one in particular that was basically rolled up and deep fried in conspiracy. I'm talking about Stephen from Red Lessons brand, Navitas Parfums. Stay tuned. I would like to consider myself a free thinker, but from time to time, I actually can get caught in a web of conspiracy, especially if you hear a lot of different things that just kind of blur your reality. I actually filmed a review on this brand when it first came out, and I actually canceled it. I actually deleted that video because going back and watching it, there was something inside me that was saying, dude, you're not being hard enough on Steven. Now, as some of you know, Steven and I have been friends, you know, in the past. We never stopped being friends, but we did stop talking and I'm to blame for a lot of that because there was so many rumors flying around and, you know, I'm sure you probably heard them. If you haven't, you know, it was a clone house. It was, you know, controlled by Masamaraza, Dua Fragrances, uh, our moth. I mean, there was so many different conspiracies going around. It actually clouded my judgment of the brand, even though I bought this discovery kit and actually did a review on it. And at the time that I was filming it, I felt like I was being transparent until I went back and watched it. And I'm like, yeah, dude, you're going really light on somebody that has all this conspiracy around them. Well, I was wrong for that, and I want to tell you guys that. And yes, I did pay for this. No, Steven did not have some guys come rough me up or tune me up to get me to say anything about this brand. This is of my own free will and accord, and I feel like I owe it to you, the viewers, to know the truth about this brand and most of all, what it smells like, what type of performance I got, so on and so forth. I know this is a little bit longer of an intro that I'd like to do, but I do feel like I owe you, the viewers, a little bit of an apology, and Steven as well, I owe you an apology, and I'm gonna give you my true thoughts on this. Who knows if I like everything in it or not? We'll find out in just a minute. As opposed to going into which fragrance I like the best and which one I like the least, I'm actually just gonna go in order of how they are in the discovery kit, just like this. The first one is Navos. Now, I have worn these fragrances. There's a couple of them that are almost empty. There's one that I didn't wear a whole lot because it's just not really my vibe, but six out of seven, not bad. Now, Navos is a very fresh and green fragrance. Now, there was you know, a rumor that just said that this was a hybrid clone of Zerjoff Neo and Roja Dove's Elysium. Now, I could see where people might draw that conclusion of, uh, you know, drawing a comparison of those two fragrances, but if you guys think about so many mainstream fragrances, there are similarities between Dior Sauvage and Prada Luna Rosa Carbon, Cidrat Boise from Mansera and Aventus. You guys get the idea. So anyway, to me, no, this is not a hybrid clone. And as a matter of fact, the idea that these are clone oils is absurd because you can actually smell the quality in these fragrances. So the first thing that you're gonna get on this fragrance is some bergamot and grapefruit, which actually comes off really, really green. And it also comes off a little bit, well actually after the bergamot settles and the grapefruit settles a little bit, you're gonna get a real clean vibe. You do get that in the opening, but you're getting you know, the tartness from the grapefruit and you're also getting you know, that juicy citrus from the bergamot. But as it starts to dry down, it starts to get a little bit of soapy as it mixes with the florals. And after about 10 minutes or so, you're gonna get a little bit of spicy nuances mixed with some musk and a hint of vetiver. Now for a fresh and soapy and really just mass appealing fragrance, you're gonna get pretty decent performance with this, or at least I did on my skin. I got between about six and a half to maybe a little over seven hours, just depending on how warm the weather was. So when you think of a, you know, a bright, fresh and soapy fragrance, you're not gonna get like mind blowing performance, but you can definitely tell that there is quality ingredients in this. This is perfect 
perfect for casual. This is perfect for, you know, any type of occasion. More geared for like spring and summer as far as like my personal taste goes. Before I move into the next fragrance, I do want to cover one more thing that was also an issue that I actually spoke to Stephen about and he was very transparent with any of the questions that I was bringing forth. He was, you know, very honest about it. He did lay to rest all these conspiracy theories that were being thrown at him. One of the biggest conspiracies was the bottles and I, that's something that I even thought myself. Nobody even had to say that. They did look very much like the Parfum Cologne line with the color graded glass from Roja Dove or Roja Parfums. Steven says that it's coincidence and when he saw the bottles and then saw Roja's, he was like, oh crap, this is a problem. So he did admit that, but that's neither here or there. He did say that maybe at some point he may come out with some different type of presentation. Whether you like the bottles or not, I'm here to talk about the juice. That's just one more thing I wanted to lay to rest in case anybody had any inquiries about that. Okay, the next fragrance up is Intimus, which actually comes from the derivative of Intimate. And this fragrance would definitely be an Intimate fragrance because as some people did say that this just smelled like Ultramol from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yeah, I see where people get that but no it does not smell like a clone of that it's definitely doing its own thing there are a few similarities that is a sexy fragrance this one is too that one's a little fruity this one is too again i can see where those conclusions were brought but in the end this is a different fragrance Okay, this one opens fresh and fruity, which will linger for probably, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes or so before it starts evolving, and then dries down as a sweet and sexy vanilla, amber, and musk symphony with a little bit of those fruit nuances still coming around from the top notes into the dry down, but when it completely dries down, you get a really nice, sweet and sexy musk, pretty much. And if I was to say anything about, you know, if it was gonna be drawing, you know, complete comparisons to Ultramall, it would be like a very niche version of an Ultramall. As a matter of fact, I did recently smell Date for Men from Jeremy Fragrance, who, you know, people also said that that smelled similar. I can see where people think that too, but it's doing its own thing as well, and I'm actually gonna do a review on that one because I actually like that one and I actually like Intimus from Navitas. As far as performance for me, I got between seven and a half to eight hours, maybe a little over eight hours, again, just depending on the weather. Now, this one is sexy enough and has enough fresh aspects that you could wear this year round, but I think it would really shine maybe like in the spring and in the fall. Now, the next fragrance is Prima, since some people were drawing comparisons to Creed Aventus. Now, this is one where I'd have to say really goes in a completely different direction as far as like that whole Aventus thing. Yeah, I understand, you know, the little bit of bergamot or whatever in the opening. For me, this is just like a one-two knockout punch with mango and musk. I don't really get to smell a lot of mango and a lot of fragrances. I adore mango and I think that the creamy mango in this is really, really good. Now on the opening of this one, you know, besides what I was talking about, like the mango and musk, because that's really what this fragrance turns into. It actually opens up with some juicy bergamot, a little bit of tart grapefruit, and then you get that creamy mango. Those are the three primary top notes that I get, and it's good. It's really, really good. I love the opening of this fragrance. It, you know, it kind of confuses your palate a little bit, which I like. Then once this thing dries down, it's going to be kind of a clean and creamy and slightly earthy patchouli and musk dry down with little hints of that mango still lingering just a little bit in the dry down, at least to my nose anyway. I find this to be a very refreshing and unique fragrance, even if it, you know, in some way, shape or form, it might have been in inspired by Aventus. I don't know that. I didn't ask Steven if it was. And like I said, it completely goes in a totally different direction to my nose. For a mango musk duo with some fresh notes and some tart notes, I thought I got above average performance with this too. I got around just slightly over seven hours on the performance of this one. And of course, you know, I'm just using my decant. So I didn't spray heavily with it. I probably did maybe about like two or three sprays, just depending on which fragrance it was. But I do have, you know, like I said, I do have a couple that are either out or completely out. This one is about halfway gone. Okay, next fragrance up is 
absolutely my favorite of the lot. It is Absolutio. And as you can see, this is one that has been completely polished off. This is the one that people touted was the BR540 clone. Not hardly. Yes, it does have like a BR540-ish type thing going on as do numerous fragrances. These are popular DNAs that work and have their own spin, so I'm digging them. Now, as far as this one goes, this was my most complimented and the first three got a lot of compliments as well. Now, once we get to the next three, after this fourth one, I didn't get any compliments to speak of, but the compliments for the first four were more than enough to compensate for it. Now, if I can just say anything about this fragrance, it is a very sexy gourmand, and other than it being my favorite fragrance, it was my most complimented out of these samples that I wore as much as I possibly could. So the opening on this one, you're gonna get like a sweet cherry almond mixed with some warm and spicy cinnamon. This opening is absolutely to die for. Now the dry down is, is hitting on all eight cylinders as well. So as this dries down, you're gonna get a little bit of that spice that's coming from the cinnamon, but think like cinnamon apple mixed with some sweet chocolate and salted caramel or toffee, which is laying over a very, very sexy cloud of musk. So you're gonna get that saltiness from ambergris, which is, I don't know, it just seemed like it was almost like a recipe. You know, you talk about like salted caramel and sweet apples. And yes, this is very much a gourmand fragrance. So I like to wear my gourmands in the fall and the winter. Yeah, this is that, you know, fall, state fair type fragrance, date night in the fall, you know, watching the leaves fall, cuddled up next to somebody at a football game. Oh yeah, good, good fragrance. I absolutely adore this one. Now, of course, as some of you know, saffron is one of those magical notes in BR540, but it works in so many different ways and so many different fragrances. This, I think, maybe mixed with the almond might give off the BR540-esque type vibe off of it, but like I said, it is very much its own fragrance. Now, as far as performance goes, I got a solid 10 hours out of Absolutios, which is the best performing fragrance so far out of the lot. Next fragrance, could probably be the most controversial of the lot. And the reason for that being is it does very much smell like Mancera's red tobacco. I was able to draw a lot of differences from what, you know, mainstream everybody's conspiracies with the tinfoil hats on. And yeah, I was sitting there with my tinfoil hat at one time too. So I'm not exempting myself from that. But there's one thing that nobody can get around on this one is the red tobacco. Now this one is called Virtus and it is very much a loud, sexy, spicy tobacco fragrance. For what I like, I love my tobacco fragrances and I adore this fragrance. And yes, it does smell very much like red tobacco. It does smell a bit cleaner. There is some syntheticness in Mancera's red tobacco, especially in the opening. This one smells more natural. So if I was going to draw any comparisons between the two, as far as saying yes, identical, or there are you know some variations I would say that this one is a little cleaner and doesn't quite smell as synthetic on the opening. So as far as this opening, it is a very, very strong opening. It has a very prominent light cherry tobacco note in it, which I absolutely think is fabulous. I love, like I said, I love my tobacco fragrances, but this one almost smells like a really genuine cherry tobacco note. Like cherry pipe tobacco mixed with some saffron and another note that I don't see a whole lot, but I absolutely adore nutmeg. Now one thing that this fragrance does do that is a little bit different like going into the dry down, it actually has the note of mango again showing up in the mid. So it does give it a creaminess. So you're getting that spicy opening you know with the almond and the kind of cherry tobacco vibe. Then it goes into some creaminess that comes from the mango, which is a very nice, you know, it's just kind of a, a brief thing that goes on in it, but when it happens, it's really cool. But it's not just the mango that's making it that creaminess. You also have some fig milk mixed with some cinnamon and some honey. So of course you know that tobacco and honey and 
vanilla goes together like peas and carrots. So on the dry down, you're still going to get a hint of that tobacco mixed with a slightly sweet and resinous vanilla, which is also mixed again with that salty caramel, which is a caramel note mixed with some ambergris. And then you have musk is like the final player in the dry down. Now, of course, there's more notes, but those are the ones that I pick up and I found that really kind of shine the most, you know, from the top to the bottom of the complete life of this fragrance. Now, as I said, it does open very loud. It does start to tame after about 45 minutes, but I did get a solid 10 and a half hours of performance with this fragrance, which I thought was out standing. This is a fragrance that I feel that you could wear in a dressed up situation. A formal dressed up situation are perfect for fall and winter. Okay, the last two fragrances are for you oud lovers out there. Now I know oud can be kind of a complicated note and these two fragrances are a bit more on the complicated side. The first one I'm gonna go over is actually the next one in line. It is Oud Imperium. Now I actually really enjoy this one. Now I've, I've mentioned before that Oud is a fragrance that sometimes works for me, sometimes doesn't. Um, as some of you may or may not know, there are different types of Oud. There are more like Eastern types of Oud and Western. These are gonna be more like Eastern Ouds. So they're gonna be more animalic and even fecal in some circumstances. And Oud Imperium is probably the most creative fragrance out of the lot in my opinion. The Oud note in here is like that, that fecal opening, but it's mixed really, yeah, I did say fecal, but please just hear me out. The Oud in here is actually got some fruit mixed in here. You have like some apple, you also have some lavender and some lemon that actually really kind of tame it and just makes it a very unique opening. But that fecalness of the Oud is just like, it's just in the very, very beginning within like maybe the first five to eight minutes it really starts developing and mixing and playing with the apple and the lavender and the lemon, which makes it really, really nice. Not long after, as it's starting to go into the mids, you're gonna pick up some of the vanilla that actually is mixed with some light florals, which are jasmine and lily of the valley. So this oud actually remains fruity with the light florals, and then as it dries completely down, it's mixed with a really nice amber and musk that is really, really nice. You can actually you know feel that vanilla kind of peeking in and out which kind of gives it a very smoothness so I don't know how uh, it was developed but you know you think about like the apple and the vanilla and the oud the lavender all these notes are just peeking their head a little bit but the oud is just there from top to bottom so it's definitely going to dry down with a slightly floral and fruity woody dry down which is really nice and will actually pull some compliments i think i didn't actually get any with this but it almost has like a gourmandish oud now i did actually get one compliment wearing this fragrance it was like a saturday afternoon i was with my son so i was sitting here thinking you know like okay it opens kind of fecal but yeah the vanilla and the apple and the lavender and the florals just really kind of help tame it and actually gives it kind of a sexy vibe. I would definitely say this is more of a sophisticated fragrance. This is not gonna be a mass appealing fragrance. This is gonna be somebody who's very confident and likes to wear a little bit more, you know, kind of tricky fragrances and likes to really kind of test the boundaries of what they will actually wear. Now, as far as performance on this, I got 11 plus hours, which is really good. As I said, this is a more complicated fragrance, but yet, very sophisticated, even regal. This would be something that I would wear with a suit to a special event, especially if it was just where I was just, you know, wasn't really trying to, you know, reach out and get anybody's attention, but just, you know, have my stance there, just being an alpha male. Okay, last but not least is the Oud Luxuria. Now, as I said, my Ouds, I can take them or leave them. This is one that I'm not super crazy about and it's not because it's a bad fragrance. I am not, as of right now, a big fan of like 
Turkish rose and Middle Eastern oud. Ironically, two years ago, I was really getting into fragrances like this. Now, it's kind of weird, you know, there's fragrances that I will fall in love with and fall out of love with and vice versa. So there may come a time where, you know, I come back to liking fragrances like this. This is a well put together fragrance. You can tell that it does have the natural oud in here, which is also another reason I need to bring up one thing about both of these oud fragrances. They're only available in the 50 ml, but you will pay the same thing for the 50 ml ouds that you will 100 ml of any of the other ones in the collection. And that is because of it being natural oud, which is a more expensive note to use. And also like in this one, it has two different types of rose notes and rose can get pretty expensive as well. Now I didn't wear this one a whole lot. Um, it just wasn't my vibe, it just really wasn't. But to be honest with you, it did perform very well. I'd actually even go as far as saying beastly. I didn't really gauge it, but I was getting a lot of wafts of it throughout the day. I would say probably at least a good solid 12 hours. But I'm not gonna kick this fragrance off just because I personally am not digging like Turkish rose and oud fragrances right now. Now it is definitely the most complicated of the lot. And then the oud imperium is probably the most creative of the lot. You know, as far as like, you know, testing boundaries and trying to do something different or unique I feel that that one is definitely the most creative. So I hope once and for all, at least from my standpoint, I have taken off the tinfoil hat and laid the conspiracies of this brand to rest. Steven, I think you've done an excellent job with this. I look forward to smelling the rest of the line. If you have smelled any of the Navatus fragrances, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what your favorite one is. And until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.